sustainable development. The heroic struggle of our time must focus on achieving this through inclusive growth. The Ushuja of our era calls for urgent mobilization to create wealth and jobs, reduce poverty and inequality, and protect our environment. The dedication we bring to these tasks will determine how well we uphold the legacy of Mekadilili, Wamenza, and other freedom fighters. This fact is abundantly clear to us. The persistent unemployment, severe poverty, increasing inequality, and general growth and development are not only undesirable, but are also an acceptable derogation from the legacy of our mashuja and the spirit of our intergenerational commitment to freedom. Recognizing this, the government formulated a plan aimed at enhancing dignity and security, creating wealth and expanding opportunities by increasing investments in infrastructure development, essential service delivery, and the productivity of key strategic sectors. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda is Kenya's economic freedom charter, which mobilizes unprecedented levels of investment into the most impactful sectors in providing essential public services inclusively and affordably, multiplying incomes and creating millions of new good jobs for our many well-educated and highly skilled young people. The priority sectors identified as the strategic pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda have enabled us to galvanize the national development agenda by mobilizing local and foreign investments, significantly improving the reach, efficiency, and impact of services, and creating jobs at a sustained incremental rate. We are driving agricultural transformation through major interventions across all value chains, including fisheries and aqu aquaculture, horticulture and food crops, livestock, beekeeping, and rangeland development. Investments are being made to boost production and supply of quality inputs, provide extension services, reduce post-harvest losses, and maximize returns for producers. These efforts are aimed to increase economies of scale through aggregation, agro-processing, value addition, and exports. Let me announce to farmers across Kenya that we have just concluded the process of procuring the next consignments of fertilizer and assure them that the fertilizer that we have will continue to retail at 2,500 as we committed ourselves, whether it is tea, whether it is coffee, whether it is maize, whether it is wheat, whether it is sugarcane, we will make sure that prices of fertilizer are universal because we have seen its impact on matters food productivity in Kenya and the lowering of the cost of living as a result of reduction of food prices because of enhanced supply. Fellow citizens, in the digital economy, we have invested in developing digital and ICT hubs in all worlds and expanding last mile fiber connectivity across the country, reaching areas previously considered remote and underserved. I must congratulate members of parliament across Kenya for being partners with us in this effort, and I want to encourage all our members of parliament to front load and to prioritize the construction of ICT hubs across Kenya so that we can give digital opportunities for our young people, because these efforts have enabled young digital creators, entrepreneurs, and workers to access opportunities, not just locally, but also globally. We have also supported our Mamamboga, the border, border operators, small-scale traders, construction workers, and others working in the informal and the hustler economy by investing in financial inclusion 
through accessible loans, capacity building, and regulatory reforms to facilitate their growth. I want to commend the banking industry for extending just last week an additional 150 billion in loans and loan facilities to micro, small, and medium enterprises to complement our efforts in making sure that we attend to the people lower in the category. To achieve universal health coverage, we have transformed the provision of health care to enable all Kenyans access promotive and preventive services in addition to curative services. First, under an all-inclusive social health framework and also through programs like Afia Bora Mashinani, which has onboarded over 100,000 community health promoters who provide health care directly to people in their homes. Ladies and gentlemen, today marks the conclusion of Bomayangu Week, launched last Monday to celebrate the achievement of our affordable housing program. Throughout the week, we showcased significant progress in advancing this ambition, ambitious agenda, which aims to transform lives and livelihoods by providing affordable, decent homes for millions of Kenyans. On this Mashuja Day, we recognize key initiatives such as the Kenya Urban Resilience Project, the Kenya Informal Settlements Improvement Project, and the National Climate Resilience Program, otherwise known as Climate Works. Under our bottom-up economic transformation agenda, we are committed to striking a major blow for the freedom struggle of our time by eradicating the shame of hunger in the land of plenty, taking decisive measures to significantly reduce poverty, providing all Kenyans with high-quality health care, and enhancing dignity, well-being, and standards of living for everyone. The affordable housing program is central to these efforts, with a target of delivering 200,000 homes annually to meet the growing demands of housing. This initiative aims to tackle the deficit that has left many Kenyans living in insecure, unsanitary, and poorly contracted dwellings, and also fostering the growth of sustainable communities and generating jobs and opportunities across many other sectors. We all know that the future is urban. 60% of our population, not just in Kenya, but globally, will be living in urban areas. That is not a choice we can make. That is what's going to happen. But we can make a choice as to what kind of living, what kind of settlements, these 60% of our citizens who will be living in urban areas, how they will live. Either they will live in slums or they will live in distant dwellings. It is our choice and the choice of our generation to make sure that when we undergo this process, which is inevitable, and we have communities that are urban, they will be living in decent livelihoods. The progress so far is remarkable. 124,000 housing units are at different stages of completion across 75 sites in 37 counties. These projects include homes also for the military, police, and correctional services. I am happy that the students have participated in designing student accommodation. And congratulations to the students who came, the 60 of you who have participated in that process. Here in Kwale County, I am also happy that the Matuga Affordable Housing Project is underway, creating daily employment for over 200 workers. Similarly, the Diani White House project is under construction and is also generating more jobs and more opportunities. Bomayangu, a key platform in the program, exemplifies our commitment to economic empowerment and improving Kenya's quality of life. This online portal 
aggregates housing demand with over 547 registered users, of whom 52,000 have collected, have collectively saved more than 2.3 billion towards home ownership. These numbers represent real individuals striving to achieve their home ownership dreams. For example, Joseph Cairo from Ruiru, who began saving on Bomayangu Hasa and has now accumulated an impressive 895,000, more than half the cost of a one-bedroom unit. Similarly, Jemima Nyaboke, a businesswoman living with disability in Nairobi, has saved 650,000 steadily and surely bringing herself closer to home ownership. Jane Mumbi Mushina, a widow and a mother of two from Nakuru, will soon move from her rented unit, which costs 1,500 monthly, to her own one-bedroom home after patiently and with determination saving for it. Likewise, David Gagiri, a 44-year-old Juakali artisan and a father of four, is rearing and nearing the completion of his savings to move into his own house. These stories illustrate how the, offer, how the affordable housing program is empowering ordinary citizens, affirming their dignity and opening pathways for financial independence. In December this year, just a few months from now, we will achieve a major milestone by handing over 1,080 new studio units at the Mukuru Meteorological Site in Nairobi with mortgages priced at 3,200 per month. This is to citizens who today pay the same amount but live in a slum. Rent that does not qualify them to own the dwelling finally. The revolutionary dimension of this milestone is that finally, mortgages will no longer be the vocabulary of a lucky few, but an accessible, feasible, and convenient instrument of bottom-up empowerment, making home ownership affordable and therefore attainable. The program's benefits extend beyond housing. So far, the affordable housing program has created over 160,000 jobs throughout the housing value chain. While the industry remains predominantly male, we are working to increase female participation to 30%, up from the current 20%. Our collaboration with the Juakali sector has demonstrated the affordable housing program's significant potential to transform local manufacturing. In Kwale, over 200, over 200 artisans are providing essential services at various sites, fabricating components such as doors, windows, and cabinet fittings. The success of involving worker cooperatives and artisans has strengthened our commitment to support local businesses. You heard the governor of Kwale enumerate the number of companies that now work with us. To facilitate this further, the government has allocated Kenya shillings 4.4 billion, specifically for payments to MSMEs supplying goods and services under this program. I was especially proud to witness the signing of the 720 million subcontract awarded to Soweto High Rise Fabricators and Woodworkers Association in Kibra, just the event that you saw us here this morning. This partnership will greatly enhance the business prospects of these Juakali associations, now recognized as bona fide affordable housing program suppliers. Ladies and gentlemen, on this day, it is important for us to remember that the objective of the freedom struggle 
was for the citizens of Kenya to have full rights and opportunities to live in dignity and achieve a high standard of living with security, health, and wealth. As we implement affordable housing program, therefore, we must at the same time move quickly to complement it with initiatives that promote health and well-being and secure work and livelihoods. Thus, healthcare remains a priority under our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. We are advancing the scope of the universal health coverage to give every Kenyan access to promotive, preventive, curative, and emergency services. Through the Social Health Insurance Fund, citizens will contribute and access comprehensive health care benefits. And those who are categorized as not being able to pay, the government of Kenya will step in and pay for them. The value for money in this scheme will be undeniable once the migration from the National Health Insurance Fund is completed and the fund is fully operational. As of the beginning of this month, 12.9 million Kenyans were registered with the Social Health Authority and all public health institutions and alongside 50% of private facilities were already enrolled to provide services. I urge private hospitals to expedite the contracting process to enable us complete the final rollout of the universal health coverage. To accelerate this rollout, the government of Kenya has released 